Hey everybody, I'm Dirty Dan, and welcome back to Greasy Boy Customs. Today we're going to do a short video on gauges and what you need to know to help pick the right gauges for your custom application or if you just like to change them out on a stock application. Let's go ahead and get started. Two good examples of size difference here. You have your standard smaller gauges. These are about two inches on the back side. The trim ring is about two and a quarter. These are about three inches, about three and a quarter on the trim rings. This is pretty standard across most, but there are variations out there. Pay attention to which ones you are getting. Those are two common sizes for gauges. They may not work in your application. Make sure to take a template like a piece of paper or cardboard and draw your gauges out on that and see if it's going to fit in the space that you are working with. Plot it out before you make your purchase. You'd hate to buy a three, four, five hundred dollar set of gauges and then they don't fit. Pay attention to that. Now, that showed you chrome trim rings and the beige colored face and a needle. You do have different styles like this that has a digital readout on it. Whether you go with a digital readout or you go with a needle readout, that is completely your preference for your style that you're doing on your vehicle. One is not necessarily better than the other. They both have their pros and cons. It's whatever you'd like at that point. Now, an important subject, what type of gauge do you need? Well, like we stated earlier, there's a couple different styles. You have an electronic gauge like this. The electronic gauges have an electrical connector on the back. You can see on this one, it has a four pin connector on the back. And those four pins are for light power, ignition power, ground, and signal to the sending unit, whether it's your oil pressure, your fuel level, or your water temperature, or other gauges that you may have in your system. That is another thing you need to take into account. How many gauges do you need? Do you really need all of them? Do you want extras just for looks? Think about those things as well. Now, the other type of gauge is a mechanical gauge. Mechanical gauge has a physical connection that comes out of the back of here. Most of you have probably seen these at the parts store, your sun gauges or the uh, cheaper auto meter ones. They have a tube or a line that comes out of the gauge. You have to put a hole in your firewall, try to feed it through there. If it ever breaks or snaps on the water temperature ones, you got to replace the whole damn thing. Or on an oil pressure one, they run a plastic or a copper tube through there. And you know what happens when they break and fail inside your vehicle? They spray oil all over your car. That's bad. Another benefit to having electronic ones. You don't have that problem. Now, there are some more variations we need to talk about. Let's talk about the speedometers. Here's the back of the speedometer in my Roadster. Again, you'll notice a electrical connection and that's it. There is no speedometer cable in here. The only thing you have to connect besides that is into that little red cap right there, and that's this unit. On a GPS-driven electronic speedometer, there's no programming. You literally screw this into the back of your speedometer, and then you have this unit here, which is your GPS device. You see on the back side, it has 3M double sticky tape. You peel that off and put it in a good spot where it will get a good signal. And some of them are even magnetic, so you can constantly move them around. Now, when it comes to mechanical speedometers, there is another problem. You got your cable. Now, if you'll notice at the end of a speedometer cable, you have teeth like a gear, like this right here. That gear has to be the right tooth count to work correctly. You also have to compensate for your gear ratio in your rear axle and your tire size and the amount of revolutions your tire does per mile. This takes calculating, a little bit of trial and error. Now some are pretty easy, people have done them enough. Turbo 350 transmission is a super popular transmission. People pretty much know, quick Google search, which cable or gear tooth you need to have in there. Or you can just plug in a GPS unit, not an electronic one. Now there is one more electronic style. It's kind of a combination of the, both of these. That's called a pulse generator, like this. A pulse generator, like I said, hybrid, it's kind of a little bit of both, and it takes a little bit of programming as well. On the back, there's these switches that you can move up and down. These are called dip switches. I'll show you a picture right here. 
Now the dip switches, it's a little bit of a process. You have to drive it, try the switches in different positions, and then they give you a chart, which I'll show you right now. They give you a chart that looks like this. A little confusing, a little overwhelming, huge pain in the ass. Sometimes they go smooth and you get them the first or second time. Other times it's the 40th time. But you have to move these switches around in according to what you have and what your speedometer is reading to make sure that's calculated correctly and getting the right readout. A little complicated. This was really new school 20, 30 years ago. It's, it's not anymore, it's pretty annoying. But if you still wanna run it, they're out there and they do work once you get them dialed in. The next thing we're gonna talk about are fuel sending units and your fuel gauge. Now this is another thing you need to think about ahead of time. There are a couple common types of fuel sending units as far as the resistance readings. Now fuel level works off a resistance reading. When it's all the way down and empty, it reads one resistance value and as it rises, it changes to a different resistance value which gives you your measurement on your fuel gauge. The thing you need to think about is one, if you're putting in a universal or a new sending unit that comes with your gauge, you already know that they match. But let's say you already have a sending unit and you want to use that existing one with the gauge that you purchased. And this is where you need to check what your resistance is. I'm going to show you how to do that. We're going to use a multimeter to check this. Again, if you've seen this before in my previous videos, it's pretty simple. If not, I'm going to show you really quick. You want to set your meter to ohms. You can see the ohms symbol. It kind of looks like a horseshoe. You're going to turn it to that. Now this meter automatically reads whatever resistance range. If yours is not an auto reading meter, you want to set the range to less than 500 ohms. You connect one lead to any part of the metal on the body and you connect the other lead to where your wire hooks to the top. And you can see in the empty position, we are reading 1.3 ohms. And in the full position, we are reading 89.7 ohms. Again, as we swipe through it, you can see it changes as we change the fuel level. So that I'll tell you right now that this reads low, close to zero ohms at empty, and at full, it is close to 90 ohms at 89.6. Now, this is not the only way to do it. Obviously, we have access to the sending unit, or if it's easily accessible in your vehicle and you can get to it and measure it, that works as well. Now, if you can't get to it, usually a simple Google search will give you the answers that you need on what your resistance is. Then you can look at the gauge that you want to get and make sure that the resistance the gauge works at is the same as your sending unit. And voila, there you go. That's pretty much gonna wrap it up what we're talking about with gauges on here. Now, again, there are several different options. This was to provide you with some information to help make your decision and to make sure that you're thinking about everything you need to do. Again, you need to pay attention to the size, the location, what style is gonna work for what you need to do. Don't let anybody talk you into doing something you don't want to do. Do what you're comfortable with, do what you feel is gonna work the best and look the best for your application. It's your car. Again, there are many options. If you have a stock dash, you can even go with a Dakota Digital setup that looks like a stock cluster, but it's really a modern style one. They've got beautiful colors on them. Pretty easy installation. They are a little pricey, but they work great. I'm gonna put a link below for the Dolphin gauges that I use in most of my vehicles. You can take a look at them on eBay and see what they've got. There's different options. Take a look. If you have any questions about what we talked about, message me, email me, hit me up, message me on here, make a comment below. And if you have gauges that have worked good for you and you like the performance and you recommend them to somebody, put a comment below. Leave a link if you'd like. It'd be very helpful. How about your fellow hot rodders? Till next time, happy hot rodding.